Mediaco. Well, Tom, how about clean? 21 minutes a game, he averages 13 and a half and six. I mean, in 21 minutes. We are underway from the Rock. UConn and Seton Hall. What a night last night in the Big East. Marquette lost to Providence, which was kind of a shocker. And then you look at you look at Butler, what they've done so far. Nobody was thinking about Butler. Butler, Providence, the middle of this league is going to be very, very tough. They would like to feed it into Kling, and here he is, 10 on the shot clock, fighting his way to the basket, shot blocked away, gets it back, put back no good, gets it against. His third shot was no good. I mean, that's one thing about UConn, plus 12 rebound margin, Tom. That's in the top 20 in the nation. They crush glass. Shot clock is under 10. Newton assessing. Gives it off to Spencer for three. Off the front of the rim. Offensive board by Newton. He's so good at that. And then Spencer corrals it. Three from the corner. It's good. I mean, how many chances are you going to have? They basically had the ball for a minute there with those offensive rebounds. And again, the way Seton Hall defends the three and makes the three is going to be important for tonight's ball game. I mean, they're a 30% shooting team, but they made 10 against Missouri, which is a big reason why they won that game. Dawes down low, gives it off to Betty Ako, and he lays it in. It's a 3-2 game. You know, Betty Ako has been very good. This kid only averaged 6-5 last year at Santa Clara, 10-8 and eight this year, and one of the leading offensive rebounders in the nation. Newton running the point. Uh, he and Spencer in the backcourt will be effective. Klingon can pass for a big man. Looking for a cutting Newton. Newton for three. Yes! This guy from the three-point line. I never thought he'd be this level of shooter. Now, he's a good three-point shooter. Not great. He's not like Cam Spencer, but 35%. That is a more than adequate three-point shooter. Now he's got two. Give credit to their assistant coaches for finding him in the portal at East Carolina and thinking that he could do this. Well, this way, this is really giving him too much room. Trey Davis has to get up on him a little bit high, and he's a good defender, Trey Davis. UConn with four rebounds so far, all four offensive rebounds. A lot on that first possession. Klingon back in his way in against Betty Ako. Off the glass, it's good. Well, you see what the strategy is by Danny Hurley early in this game. They've thrown the ball to Klingon every time down the floor. See all little motion offense. Richmond hovering. Richmond threw a double team, tried to high step his way. Gets it back outside. Plenty of time on the shot clock. And today, Wusu is able to can that first jumper. You know, I talked to Shaheen Holloway about a day Wusu. He played great the other day at 20 points. He made four threes to get the clean again. That's travel. All right, Lap, let's take a look at your keys to the game. Well, there's no doubt for Connecticut they got to dominate the paint. And that's what we're seeing so far between offensive rebounds and getting the ball inside. And Seton Hall, 30% three-point shooting team. For the year, only averaging five and a half threes a game. They've got to make at least eight tonight to be able to stay in here with the chance. Whistle blows out of bounds is Alavir Dawes. Isaiah Coleman checks in. So first substitution as Dawes checks out. Well, this kid is a this freshman, Isaiah Coleman. Two-time Big East Freshman of the Week, so he's a guy that they really are high on. What a pickup, too. He was originally signed to go to Coastal Carolina. Klingon fakes the handoff. Double teamed up top, then gives it off to Newton. Little slip. Shot clock is under 10. They feed Klingon back to the basket. Double team will come from the top. Outside for Spencer for three. Off the side of the iron. That was a really good defensive set by Seton Hall that time. And you see, they kind of were faking and recovering on Klingon. They don't want to show him the same double all the time. Sometimes they'll double, sometimes they'll just stunt, stunt at him. Four-point lead for the Huskies. A little token pressure for UConn. And you know, this guy here, Tom, Kadari Richmond is such an important guy because he's the most talented guy on Seton Hall. 6'6 six, six point guard, can handle, get to the basket. He's got to lead the way. Coleman, pull up jumper, no good, too strong. Davis has it knocked out of bounds. It'll remain Seton Hall basketball. Well, you mentioned Richmond Lap started his career at Syracuse. When he went down with the injury last year, that really affected Seton Hall. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, he really has been their best player for two years. 
he is a very, very talented kid, but, you know, he's he's somewhat mercurial. Some days he's great, and some days he's just not in it. They need him to be in it all the time. You are in mid-season <laughs> form with mercurial. I don't know about that. Whistle blows. The clock did not move, so Brian O'Connell will go over to the, the scorer's table. He played the way they did. He said it gave us confidence. He said for all of us that returned, we knew what we lost from last year. But we got kind of back to where we were playing last year because of those games. And, and the thing about it is they have all these guys that played last year on significant minutes. By the way, the uh, the shot clock in the game clock was missing five and a half seconds. Kadari Richmond didn't realize the shot clock was winding down, and it's a violation. You know, he's two for 16 from the three-point line on the year. So obviously that tells you what kind of three-point shooter he is, but he's got to take that one with the shot clock winding down. That's already three turns turnovers for Seton Hall. UConn doesn't turn the ball over that often. They are really, you know, when you play, when you score 88 points a game and you only average less than 10 turnovers a game, let me tell you something, you're handling the ball. They have four games this year where they reached double digits and it was low double digits. Newton inside to Klingon. Klingon back to the basket away from the hoop. Shot clock is at five, gives up his dribble. Cutting Spencer. Nice pull up. It's good. This kid's a good player. I tell you what, I give him credit. He leaves Rutgers. He was the leading scorer there. And he comes to a team with national championship aspirations. And he's not scared. He comes in. He earns a starting spot. And he's the second leading scorer on the team. Richmond from 17. Newton with another rebound. Almost five minutes into this first half. UConn with a six-point lead. Caravan outside, three-pointer up top, no good, too strong. Caravan with the rebound. The putback off the glass didn't have the angle. Offensive board and a foul called against the Huskies. Boy, this, this rebounding is really a problem so far for Seton Hall. Just too many extra opportunities in this game. I mean, think about this. Seton Hall has taken three. At, at the first TV timeout, Seton Hall had taken three shots, and Connecticut had taken eight. <laughs> first four minutes of the game. Yeah, one for five in that first possession. You see the offensive rebound, six so far for the Huskies. Now it's 11 shots for UConn and five for Seton Hall. The foul was on Caravan. There's Richmond cutting to the hoop and laying it in. And that's what he can do. I don't think Danny Hurley was really happy with that kind of defense that time. Four point game. 14 and, and a half to play. And here's the Seton Hall. They'll pressure you too a little bit. Spencer covered by the big man. Goes up top for Castle. Castle's a very talented freshman. One of a handful that UConn has. Jots it up top. Swings it to Spencer. Shot clock under 10. Caravan. Back to Spencer. Better get out on him. Shot clock is at two. Newton. His runner is no good. Rebound pulled down by the hall. Dre Davis ripped his down. And Davis out of control with his dribble. Gets it under control. And Richmond resets the offense. Richmond to the baseline. Tough shot. Tough angle. Put back is good, though. Bediaco. And, and Bediaco averages over four offensive rebounds a game top 10 in the nation he just parks himself under there and he's a big body brother played at alabama his sister plays at georgia tech so a very athletic family coleman called for the foul here you look at betty Ako, i think he plants himself under the basket and he's not an easy guy to move out of there yeah, Lap mentioned it before. Transfer from Santa Clara. Had 18 double-figure games while playing at Santa Clara. But he's already got nine in 11 games for the Hall. That ball's tipped, and the turnover forced. Richmond with some good hands on the inbounds. They swing it to the corner. Three is no good. Dre Davis was open. Got to make that one. Yeah, that you're not going to get much better three than that. Castle with some separation. Castle is more of a driver right now, and he gets the roll off the back of the iron. And that time, Seton Hall fell asleep in transition. They didn't match up properly. Dawes taking a knee. He got banged as uh, the drive was happening to the basket. And you see so far in this game, seven minutes. Yeah, that could have been a charge. 
particularly with the arm beam yeah. moving away from the that, body the way it was. Gene Holloway was looking for it. That could have been a charge. Brian O'Connell, Tim Cloggerty, and Nathan Farrell are the officials for tonight's ball game. as Dawes will take a seat. They'll take a look at his knee. Ade Wusu checks back in. They go inside to Davis. Davis trying to get some separation. Put back is no good by Betty Ako. And it's knocked out of bounds. Whistle blows. And it's going to be UConn basketball. Wow, there was a lot going on on the day that time. I mean, you take a look here. I mean, I, I think you got to call something there. I will say around college basketball in the non-conference schedule so far, they have let them play a little bit more, but there's some bumping down there. Yeah, well, and I think there's been a lot of bumping in the post, to be honest with you. I think, we've, you know, the, the new charge rules, taking the charge almost out of the game. Right. We don't even see him anymore. Castle with the shot clock at seven. Castle crosses over, doesn't get the runner to go down, and a foul called against the Huskies, much to the delight of the fans here at the Rock. It's been physical early, there's no doubt. But I'm not so sure that that foul down the other end wasn't on Bediaco and not. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I thought it was on him. Samson Johnson called for the foul here. That's the third team foul for UConn. Hassan Diara is in for the first time for the Huskies. That's a good extra player. He's playing great, really. He is having a super year so far for the Huskies. Played last year, transfer from Texas A&M. Played nine games in his first year at Texas A&M. I mean, he has a great assist to turnover ratio. Not a good shooter, but he knows what his role is. 12 minutes to play in the first half. Richmond has it swatted away. I think Castle got a piece of that. Shot clock is at five. Coleman pull-up jumper. Turned out to be a tougher shot than he would like. And a foul called on the par. And he, he hasn't been able to get a look at the basket so far. UConn will inbound the basketball on the baseline. A little full-court pressure from the Pirates. A little run and jump now. How much does it help that this is a veteran team on the floor for UConn? Oh, I mean, you know, this UConn team... I, mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but this team can win it again. They have the freshman Castle out there. Diara helping to run the backcourt. Johnson to Castle. Little hedge up top. Whistle blows. And again, it is UConn. UConn, if you look at the synergy stats, they are great at sideline out of bounds and great at baseline out of bounds also. They're great offensively in everything. And Castle, the freshman, will get it in. He'll get three. it back. He'll throw it up. No good. But it's a violation. Maybe not the guy you want shooting it, but that's a pretty good play. Put yourself in Dan Hurley's shoes. I mean, it's a, that's a tough one, isn't it? To put two on the clock when you're yeah. some offense. It is tough because, you know, he, he's not there with the stopwatch trying to figure out how much time there is. I do think he would bring his own clock operator to a church. Oh, place. he definitely would. No, he might bring him here. <laughs> Dawes with 10 on the shot clock. Ade Wusu into the paint, and a blocking foul is called. That's a good call. <laughs> this is a good, strong drive. That's a good call. Four team fouls against UConn. Johnson and Newton check out. Klingon and Spencer check back in. Elijah Hutchins, Everett, the big man from Orange, New Jersey, checks in at six foot eleven. That's a bit of a bump by Diara. It's a good sell on the part of Dawes, but it was a bit of a bump. I'll tell you, though, but you can see how aggressively they're playing Dawes. Dawes was coming for the handoff on the out-of-bounds play to shoot it from the corner, but they were all in him. It was a foul, though. Five team fouls against UConn. I think Danny Hurley's saying to himself, if we can hold Dawes down, I don't know if they can score enough to beat us. Dawes averaging 13 a game, trying to get his control on the baseline. Tough bounce pass, and they force the turnover. 
Diara behind his back with his dribble gets control to Caravan for three. No good. Dead ends off the side of the iron. Whistle blows. And it's going to be a hooking foul called against Hutchins Everett. That's his first. And the fourth team foul. One thing I'll say, Tom, that uh, Seton Hall has come back strong on the glass. They're only getting out rebounded by one now. And it was bad for a while. Let me correct that two lap. It's three team fouls, not four for Seton Hall. Solomon Ball back in. Castle checks out. He's going to be a good player, too, Solomon Ball. Yeah, the freshman from Leesburg, Virginia. Started the last nine games for UConn. Tiara. Klingen's wide open. Klingen, and he's able to get that one to go down. Six-point game. No points for the Hall in the last six minutes. Dawes up top. Davis. Aday Wusu heading to the basket. Lays it in. Clear path right to the hoop. Playing with a lot of confidence on that drive. Aday Wusu has four points now for the, the Pirates. Halfway through this first half. Diara crosses over, hops to the basket, lays it in on a beautiful reverse. Dawes off the high screen, staking his way toward the right side. Tough angle on the jumper. He was leaning to his right when he let it go. Tough shot. Spencer alley -oop, and it's blocked away. And out of bounds, off the hands of Coleman. Tries to throw the lob, and that was pretty good defense. Nine seventeen to play here in the first half. UConn ten and one, Seton Hall seven and four. Spencer. Good touch pass inside. Kling it in rhythm. Lays it off the glass. Yeah, the problem there is size. Hutchins Everett got stuck way too, and he can't get back quick enough. And Klingon is so good at diving hard to the basket. You can't hedge those that hard if you're Elijah Hutchins. Ball's tipped away. Caravan forces the turnover. Long bounce pass up top to Ball, and Ball lost it out of bounds. And there's going to be a foul. It's going to send Ball to the free throw line. Pretty good move by Diara there. And then on the pick and roll, Elijah Hutchins Everett gets stuck. Can't get back to clean in time. So Solomon ball to the free throw line. 80 to 11 so far in the year. He's averaging six and a half points. In the world of college transfers, UConn, and this is partly because of what they had come back, they have one transfer. And that's Cam Spencer, basically. They had others before, but this year, because this freshman class was so heralded. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good freshman class. But, you know, Cam Spencer, he's bringing them something. I mean, leading three point shooter in the Big East by percentage, makes over three a game. And he's steady. He's experienced, he's steady. And that gives Ball and Stefan Castle time to really develop. He was a really good addition. Ball made both free throws. But what we're seeing now, Tom, is this UConn team, why are they a threat to win it all? Because they're great offensively, and they are great defensively. Yes. And their defense is really getting it done right now in the half court. It's a 10-2 run, you can see there. Just two points for Seton Hall, last four and a half minutes. Richmond was blocked by the rim, and Betty Ako is foul going up. Klingon is called for that foul. I mean, Donovan Klingon is so skilled. He's got great hands, good moves around the basket, nice. What you want to see in a big man like that is hands. That was a great catch there. And feet. And he's got hands, and he's got great feet in terms of pivoting around the basket. Hit a sore foot to start the year, and then the other foot, he sustained a toe injury. So he was a little slowed, but the coaching staff said that 
the last game against Gonzaga was when he looked most like himself. Well, he 21 points in that game. He played really well. Yako missed the first one, made the second one. It's a nine-point game, three-possession ball game with eight and a half to play in the first half. And here's that pressure again. Good job by Castle, flashing to the ball. Klingon has it knocked away. Newton picks it back up, though. Ball. He and Castle in the backcourt. They go back inside for Klingon. A lot of banging in there. Castle has it knocked away. And Seton Hall forces the turnover. Good defense that time. Freshman mistake by Castle, leaving his feet there. Ade Wusu gets it to go around the rim, and it's fits through. Well, he's really playing with tremendous confidence now, and they need that. Six-point game, 20 to 14. They had the lead to 10, Klingon. Up top for Spencer, open for three. It's no good. Well, you'd never see him miss that many shots. That one was wide open. Easy rebound for Bediaco. Dawes inside. Bediaco has it knocked away. Almost looked like he should have tried to get to the other hand. Yeah, somehow. He, was, he wasn't even on balance. And the three is no good. Ade Wusu with the rebound. And now Richmond's going to try to slow the pace down somewhat. Yeah, neither one of these teams likes to play at an ultra-fast pace. Connecticut obviously is capable, but they're so good in the half court, they don't mind playing half court. Richmond to Davis, turnaround jumper, it's good, nice touch. And all of a sudden, we've got a four-point game. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they, they had hit a drought for a long time, now they scored a couple in a row. It's a 6-0 run. Got this crowd back into it. Klingon down low. Double team doesn't matter. Kisses it off the glass. Nice high low there between Castle and Klingon. Really four guards in the game for Connecticut right now. Castle, I guess, is their four man at the moment. So very small team with Donovan Klingon in the middle. Klingon with eight points. Bediaco. Hands it off to Dawes. Dawes swings it to Davis. Davis into the paint. Davis back to the basket. Turnaround jumpers blocked away. Picked up by Richmond. Count the bucket. Get better and better, but the, the tools that he has, you can't teach those hands and you can't teach those feet. And you certainly can't teach 7-2. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, he's out with two fouls. Richmond converts. It's a 9-2 run for Seton Hall. The lead is down to three. A little pressure again. They have Dawes up top. And then it falls back into the man-to-man. -man. And that's, well, now well, they're in, in that, that zone. Matchup, yeah. They're in that matchup yep. zone. I think it's a good move by Shane Holloway. Just change it up a little bit. Will they let it go down and go into a matchup after that? Or? Uh, they, they may go man-to-man -man at the end of the shot clock. They've done that a bunch of times. Matter of fact, that's what they just did. Yeah, Newton for three, no good. So they forced the long three. Richmond with the rebound, and here he comes up the floor, going right to the cup, reverses the field. And, you know, Seno's not a team that runs a lot, but they've got to look a little bit in transition to get something before UConn sets up like that. 11-2 run. Newton has it blocked away, and now they're going to call jump ball. Possession goes to the Pirates. You see, this is not good transition defense. Nobody stops the ball. The first rule is you've got to stop the ball and make him pass it. They just let Kadari Richmond get ahead of steam and go all the way. Richmond came into this ball game with 894 career points, so he's over 900 with his seven tonight. And all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. Richmond isolated against Newton. 
Richmond from the baseline. Richmond off the glass. First lead of the night for Seton Hall. And I like how Shaheen Holloway is using Kadari Richmond. He gets him into the low post. He's got good size. I think that was a great call offensively. And I like what they're doing now with this matchup zone that in the last 10 seconds may go man to man. But they cannot lose Cam Spencer. Johnson inside. Now they're man to man. Paraben has it knocked away from behind by Richmond out of bounds. Tim Flogherty is saying that it's going to be Seton Hall basketball, but Nathan Farrell says, no, 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 it was touched last by the Pirates. That's the right call. I, I think it's the right call. It's a 13-2 run for the Pirates. And you know what, Tom? The key to this game so far has been that Seton Hall has really guarded well in the half court, especially after those first three or four minutes. Shot clock is down to seven. Diara trying to set his feet. He'll launch. No good. And the rebound pulled down by Bediaco. And they're starting to get on the glass a lot better, too. Richmond hesitates. Heads to the basket. And it's blocked out of bounds. It'll be UConn ball up. Oh, Nathan Farrell's coming over again. A little help for his friend. It is Seton Hall ball. Wow, Tim Glocker, he gets overruled twice. By Nathan Farrell. He's, he's a little younger. He's got be better peepers. <laughs> <laughs> or at least he had a better angle. And was, you don't like getting overruled twice in like 10 seconds. Richmond. Davis lays it in. 15-2 run. And Dan Hurley wants a timeout. Nope, he's not going to get it. Spencer for three and the answer You know this kid has gotten some really good looks so far in this game I, I thought he was hesitant to pull the trigger. Yeah, I earlier. thought he could have pulled that one on the left corner UConn started two of three from beyond the arc that's their first make though in their last eight three attempts Dawes fakes the pass sweeps it and lays it in I tell you, they're getting to the rim a lot against UConn, which is not you not you, now clinging is out of the game makes a big difference. Dan Hurley said today the goal is to defend the paint as that was your key. And Seton Hall has 20 points in the paint so far. To 14 for UConn. Spencer again. Three minutes to play. Newton kept his pivot foot. Tough shot. Got it to go. Boy, he's 6'5", six, six, so that's something that he can do in that lane. Only Division One player to average 16 or more, nine rebounds or more, six assists or more. Sanders to Richmond. Dawes. Pull up. 18-footer. It's good. Six in a row for the Pirates. And this matchup zone has really caused some issues for UConn right now. Newton into a double team fadeaway jumper, no good. Sampson can't control the rebound, or Johnson, excuse me, can't control the rebound. Richmond, Newton turned his head. Richmond to the basket. Richmond fires it off the glass. No good. Newton with the rebound. I mean, he was, he was getting guarded, and then all of a sudden his man just backed away. They better stop the ball. Yeah, Newton going right to the rim. It's no good. Beniaco with the rebound. Just tosses it up. Here comes Davis. He does not have numbers. Doesn't matter. Oh, Count look. the bucket. And Michigan State here. UConn had a 21 to set, excuse me, had a, uh, a 20 to 10 lead with 8.47 to play in the first half, but it's been a 21 7 run by Seton Hall. And you know, one thing, I look at Michigan State much different than you see that. They're going to be there in the end. They got a good team. They got the same team back that went to the Sweet 16 last year. So they're going to be fine. I don't know if UCLA has enough because they're very young. One and a half to play in the first half. Five-point game, ball tipped away. Richmond got a hand on it, then he lost it. And, and, and he's always been one of the top guys in the Big East when it comes to steals. And there we go, one. another one. <laughs> Boy, you got to keep your head on a swivel. 
Richmond takes a look at the clock. Working against Cam Spencer. A little shake and bake by Richmond. A little jump stop, too. He got in trouble. Sanders. And Davis along the baseline. Wow, what a tough shot. He laid it in on a reverse. You know, it's the same thing. All of a sudden, the five starters for Seton Hall are all playing pretty good. And the points of the paint certainly favoring Seton Hall. Big time. And, and a timeout call. 50% for the game. And you got to give, and you know what? You got to give Seton Hall credit for their defense. Their half court defense has been solid, especially since Kling is not in the game. Pirates were down 10. Now the Pirates are up 7. And I agree with Dan. You got to keep him out at that point. He can't pick up his third foul. Diara. Whistle blows, and Betty Ako is going to be called for the pushing foul. That's his second foul. They should get him out, too. 16 fouls. Hutchins Everett will check in for him. Castle, the freshman up top. Got a nine-second different shot clock, game clock. Spencer Covered up by Davis goes to Johnson lost control cutting baseline whistle blows Solomon ball fell to the floor hard And he's going to go to the free throw line for yeah. two Samson Johnson almost lost that great pass at the last second So he was in the act of shooting, so we'll go to the free throw line for two. First one's good. Elijah Hutchinson will check out. Ade Wusu will check back in. And now the second shot coming from the freshman. Solomon Ball made both. Five point game. Newt will check in for Johnson. UConn is going All very small. Yeah. All and, guards. And part of that is that they can do that with the lineup that Seton Hall has out yes. there. They're going to hold it for Richmond. Well, he definitely wants to take the last one. There it is. There it is. Off the front of the rim. No good. Ball tipped around. A day. Wusu will check it up. And it is no good. Nobody has more than two for either team. And, and the kid they have to get going, I don't want to get him mad because right in front of me, Dallas <laughs> Caravan played 15 minutes without scoring. He only took two shots. I think he probably realizes that uh, he has to get going. In fact, somebody probably reminded him of it at halftime. I'm going to guess he definitely was reminded. Clinging with the high screen, Newton. Get a little floor. Doing a little reassessing and a rescreening. Ball to Caravan. Caravan going to the basket. Ball deflected. Five on the shot clock. Newton lets it go. Was partially blocked. Klingon turns and shoots. No good. And a pushing foul is called underneath. That was some really good defense, Tom, in the half court that time. Really good. Betty Yako made the key play by stopping that first baseline drive. The foul called against Seat Hall, so it will be UConn basketball. Battle on the baseline to Newton. He wants to find Klingon after the screen is set. Now they feed him low post. Back at his way in. Spencer. Bediaco did a good job that time of stopping that drive. Yeah, he's trying to defend him again. He blocks it out of bounds with two on the shot clock. I mean, that's really good defense. He's so physical, too. Betty He's Ako. very strong. And bounce goes to Newton. His three is no good off the side of the rim. Caravan with the offensive board. Kind of like the way the game started, yep. Tom. Caravan for three, short. And Newton saves it. And it goes to Spencer. Spencer blocked away by Mediaco. And Klingon is fouled up top. That foul will go against Dawes. This is kind of like the way the game started. <laughs> They've had the ball down this end for over a minute. <laughs> they had it for a minute in the first possession. 
That's a good block by Benny yeah. All right, so shot clock is at 20. Newton will inbound to Klingen. Richmond got a hand on it. Klingen down low, got position, and forcibly lays it in. I mean, there was a whole lot of help there. A day Wusu almost got that one on the ground. Oh, that's a backcourt. And they finally do call it. Bad mistake there by Kadari Richmond. You take a look at Donovan Klingen here. Again, that quick roll to the basket. He dives so fast. Day Wusu tried to give some help from the weak side just to get there in time. It almost looked like his foundation was even better, too, on that reverse. He definitely he gathered himself. Klingon back to the hoop to Newton. Newton going to the hoop and tried an alley hoop, but the rim cut it off. Day Wusu to Richmond. Richmond to the step, to the basket, count the bucket. He is a talented kid. And I tell you what, Tom, he came to play tonight. Because he's been involved, not just the scoring, the steals. He's just been active, alert. And when he's in transition, he's attacking, he's really good. That'll be the first foul on Spencer. And Richmond will go to the free throw line. Richmond uh, is the second player to visit double digits tonight in this game. And he converts the three-point play. And all of them, he took that one three. He's not a good three-point shooter. He's only got two all year, but I'll tell you, he'll take it to the basket. Six-point lead for Seton Hall. The opener of the Big East schedule for both of these teams. In fact, UConn at practice today, they changed the, the poster that they had to the Big East championship trophy. A lot of standing around. They, like, want to force it into Donovan Klingon. Klingon, turnaround hook. He had deep position and lays it in. I think at some point, they're going to have to double him. They really have not doubled him this whole game. Got to throw something at him. Just to kind of discourage him yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you got to change up a little bit, you know. Don't let him get too comfortable backing you down. Back to a four-point game. Dawes has it stripped away and then gets it back. Dawes under the basket. Oh, Dawes, wow! He shifted it around. That was a really good move. Really good move. 39-33. Spencer feeding Klingon. Klingon, Bediaka, there's the double. Out to Spencer, freed him up. Back to Klingon, jams at home. See what happened was they left Spencer to double. That's the one guy you can't leave. And then when he got it back, they said, oh, we got to get out there. And they left Klingon wide open. Unselfish, too, by Spencer. Oh, absolutely. It. I mean, he averages three assists a game, too. Cam Spencer comes from a very talented family. I'm sure everybody knows the story now. His brother, Pat, is battling to get a spot with the Warriors. All right, so watch Spencer here, too. That's the kind of thing that it stinks for, let's say, this game. But when you see somebody like that limp like that, it hurts the game of basketball. Oh, I mean, this, you know... One of the best centers in the country. Bediaco makes the first free throw. Five-point lead for Seton Hall. Six points, eight rebounds. He's got his nose heading toward another double-double. Their five starters are the only ones that scored for Seton Hall. And that's what it is. Those five guys, they got to get it done. And they're getting it done tonight. Pressure by the Pirates. Newton breaks it with ball. Dan Hurley's about to make another substitution. Caravan with the high screen. Trying to free Newton up. Now Spencer. There's a double team in the corner. And he stepped out of bounds. With Klingon out of the game, they can afford to double the ball. Yeah, because Samson Johnson is a runner. He's a guy who's going to score in transition. He's not going to score on post moves. It's a whole different thing now that UConn has out there. And that was a good double team in the corner by Seton Hall. Spencer gave up his dribble. He was stuck. Go get him. And that's what they did. Yeah, Brian O'Connell was right there. That's a good call. You can see his foot was on the baseline. UConn now with nine turnovers. We mentioned that they don't turn the ball over that often. They average less than 10. 
they've kind of been out of sorts really in this game. Good move. And a foul on Spencer. 15 foot. Dan Hurley's uh, talking to his son Andrew right now. He might be just checking in to see if he saw or heard anything. They're, they're checking on him now. Back on the floor, Betty Ako will go to the free throw line and he'll convert another free throw. He has eight points, eight rebounds. He's four of five from the free throw line. And one thing that definitely helps Seton Hall is they are a good free throw shooting team. And now have an eight point lead. Remember, they were trailing by 10 in the first half, and now they lead it by eight. Their energy has really been high level. Spencer to the corner. Caravan for three. That's going to get maybe UConn they, going a little bit. They need to get him going. That's his first basket of the night. So now it's a, to a five-point ball game. Today, Wusu off the high screen. He's got a speed advantage. Going to the basket. Tough shot. Doesn't get the roll. Caravan with the rebound. UConn has made its last four field goals. Spencer. Castle caught in a double team. Tough pass to Johnson. He'll get it back. Caught in the paint. He better get out. And it's a three-second violation. That's a three-second violation. See, Castle is a good player. He's going to be a great player. But he's not. In, he's only one for seven on the year from three. He doesn't have the confidence in his perimeter jumper. And he tries to drive it a lot. That time he put Samson Johnson in a tough spot. Ten turnovers for the Huskies. Richmond, right side. Distributes. Bediaco has it blocked away. Gets it back. Blocked again, but he's fouled. And that's what happens. Kadari Richmond can make so many things happen. He caused all that help to come to him that left Bediaco by himself to get fouled. And you can see the bump from behind. That'll send him back to the free throw line. Two fouls for Johnson. Four team fouls. And Betty Ako, nine points, nine rebounds. <laughs> Trying to feed that rim. I mean, he's played better in the Big East than he played at Santa Clara in the West Coast Conference. I, there, it, there must be something about it. And he does get the friendly bounce. Castle crosses over. Spencer's covered by Dawes. Castle has the ball deflected away. Richmond saw that the whole way. And now Richmond using his body to get position. Richmond. Trying to get his man off his feet. Doesn't get the roll. Put back no good. Caravan picks up the loose ball. Newton swings right past the defender. Newton down low. Johnson caught underneath. Blocked from behind. Out of bounds. Dave Wusu has definitely been bringing that energy tonight. Junkyard dog. Is that what Shaheen told us he was yesterday? He said his team just follows what he does. Looks like a linebacker. He does look like a linebacker. Castle trying to get through the defense. Richmond saves oh. it. And that's one thing about UConn. Usually one of the best in the nation on out-of-bounds plays. He's got a season-low scoring total in the first half. That's a kind of out-of-control shot for today. Wusu is there to clean it up. Eight-point game. Still no clinging. He's back in the locker room. Caravan cutting. Caravan free to the basket. Caravan lays it in. That was a great cut. His angle on the dive was outstanding. That was a great curl. He read the defense the right way, cut to the basket, and they delivered it.
Richmond back door a day Wusu and he's fouled on the floor That foul will go against Kem Spencer. Let's look at this last UConn basket. Well, you take a look here Carabin does a good job. We're gonna stop it right here. Stop it. His man is trailing when your man is trailing you You've got a curl. You don't pop out. He curled to the basket No help came and he ends up with a lead. That is a good read of how you are being played and on the opposite end, after this curl and this bucket, Cam Spencer lap picked up his third foul. The three no good. Caravan with the rebound and a jump ball. That's a good move. Danny had to take him out because he can't let him get his fourth. Good call. Yeah, I think that's a jump ball. Possession goes to Seton Hall. Day Wusu. Betty Ako wants it down low. They give it to him. Isolation. Newton comes to help. Coleman will shot fake. Baseline jumper. Good. I like the way this kid looks. Even in the first half, he missed his couple of shots, but I like what he did and how he got them. You mentioned it. Two time Big East freshman of the week. Newton high off the glass. What an angle that was. That was bad defense, though. That's that time. That was a tough shot. Donovan Klingen uh, in the locker room. He left uh, a little more than 16 minutes left to play. 16-31 to play in the second half with an apparent ankle injury. Davis, that's a tough angle, too. Well, you know, he thinks he can go on the off the dribble against Alex Carabank because he's tried three times in a row. And again, it's an eight-point lead. Seton Hall... Everybody coming to their feet. And Newton saves it on the baseline. Three from the corner. No good. In and out. Johnson can't corral the rebound. Dawes to the basket. Dawes has it blocked away. Foul. Castle, the freshman, knocked it away. There may have been contact. You're right. Diara has it tipped by Adewusu. And everybody take a breath. Position now where he has a green light all the time. You know, the thing about his game tonight, why he's not great, because the numbers don't limit, he's got zero assists. Pulling it on the bench, trying to keep that foot loosened up. Newton, little hedge by Seton Hall, pass down low, trying to get his first assist. It goes out of bounds, intended for Johnson. Well, here's my guess. This is just a guess, that where Klingon is sitting, there's a good chance he'll be back. That's kind of, as a coach, what I'm looking at. He's sitting right there next to the uh, Tom Moore, the assistant coach. You, I think he'd be at the end if he wasn't going to be I was going to say, where would he be? How I far down? This UConn coaching staff, outstanding coaching staff. In fact, everybody back from last year. Oh, I mean, Tom Moore, I don't know how many rings he's got from when he was with Calhoun. I think he got three from there. I think he was with them every year. Davis, wow. he got the bounce. And now it's a 10-point game. Largest lead for Seton Hall. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll be UConn basketball. Dre Davis is very good at putting him on the floor and getting to that little mid-range area. 19 points, eight rebounds against Mizzou. Transferred from Louisville. Played two years for the for Louisville. A little five-on-four action here. Newton Spencer. Diara reverses his field and lays it in. Fifty-two forty-four. Klingon is looking like trying to run on that bench there. When do you put him in if you're try if you think you can get him in? Now. Now. <laughs> and, and would you just try it to see if he can go? Yeah, you got to see if he can go. He's got three fouls. Oh, that's a good play by Diara. He's got three fouls, so he can come back in. Shot clock to five, Ade Wusu to Davis. He'll just throw it up. It's no good off the side of the rim. Johnson with the rebound. Eight-point game, defending national champions. First game in the Big East this year. I think Danny's playing those two point guards together, Diara and Newton, because they're both good. He wants Diara in the game for his defense. Spencer. He's bumped up top. Thank <laughs> you.
Elamir Dawes called for the foul. He bumped him. That's his third. So Dawes and a day Wusu will check out. Inbounds goes to Newton to a curling Spencer. Caravan's open for three. Johnson down low, two-handed jab. They've got 51 dunks on the year. He's got 26. That's what I was going to say. He's the guy that's leading the way. Diara's going to be called for the foul for UConn. Great pass. But that time... Hutchins Everett lost his man. He got behind him and didn't know he was there. The foul on Diara is his second. It's the sixth team foul. They want to put 30 on the uh, shot clock, so they do. Richmond distributes three. It's good. That's a bonus. Sanders, the sophomore from Queens, the former New York Mr. Basketball. That's his first shot of the night. I mean, he's wide open in the corner. Good pass from Gadari Richmond. They call the foul on Hutchins Everett. Hits his third. Team's fourth. Spencer just ahead of Sanders. Under nine minutes to play. He's got to get back. And a steal. Diara right into the hands of Coleman. Behind his back with his dribble. Heading to the hoop and he's foul going up. I like this kid. Good move when he went behind his back there. 17 fouls now for UConn. So Seton Hall, as you mentioned, Steve, very good free throw shooting team will now shoot the rest of the half. And the way they've been taking it to the basket, they may get there a lot more. Coleman, first free throw is no good. Castle will check in. Johnson will check out a smaller lineup for no, UConn. No center. Alex Caravan is their biggest guy, so they're going to have five guys out on the perimeter. Going to be hard to... Who is... Uh, and now, let's see, Shaheen Holloway is countering, countering with a small team also to be able to guard all those perimeter guys. Ade Wusu will check back in. We basically have five perimeter guys in for each team. Coleman, the freshman, second shot, 68%. Missed the, the second one as well. UConn with 14 turnovers. 17 points for Seton Hall off those turnovers. Against Coleman. Pretty good defense yeah. by Coleman. Diara has it knocked away. Shot clock is at five. Diara lets it fly off the side of the rim. Whistle blows. They're going to call a foul on Spencer, I believe. That's four. If it is Cam Spencer, it's going to be his fourth. Yep. Foul number 12, Cam Spencer. That's his fourth. Well, he's got to come out now. I mean, that's a bad foul. That's a bad way to get your fourth foul. Now they got to go back to the Samson Johnson, the big guy. Well, what Dan Hurley said today that he'd like to go nine deep if he can. He goes about eight deep. This is part of the reason why. <laughs> he, he definitely is not going to nine, and he's not doing it today. So Richmond to the free throw line. It'll be a one and one, but if he makes both. It can increase Seton Hall's lead to the largest of the night. And now he'll get a second one. And the truth is, Cam Spencer 
under normal conditions would have to sleep in the next four minutes. But you know what? If this thing gets up to 14, 15, you got to play him with the four fouls. Yeah, Spencer out with four. He's got five points tonight. He averages almost 16, ninth best in the Big East. Worst game he's played this year. I mean, let's just want to talk about Kansas when he was hurt, but this has been the worst game he's played. But you got to give Seton Hall credit. Now we mentioned it. Largest lead of the night for the Pirates. Caravan to the basket. Caravan doesn't get the roll. Second shot, no good. Ball tipped around. Bediaco has it out of bounds. It'll be UConn ball. 7.56 to play in the three way. They're, they have 13, 17 points off turnovers to eight for UConn. They have 13 points to seven on second chance points. They had just outplayed them. Newton inbound to Castle. Castle forces the action and gets the bucket to go down. Athletic kid. And, uh, and now UConn in a 1-3-1 one, one zone, which they do use. And with Stefan Castle on top, it's tough. Richmond has it stripped away and a foul called. Here's this out-of-bounds play by UConn that led to the points. Very well executed play there. Stefan Castle sets the screen for Samson Johnson. They forget about him. Comes back to the ball and ends up with a layup. Well, Richmond will go to the free throw line. Kadari Richmond, uh, four for four tonight. Seen all 11 of 15, right around the average. I think it 12 of 16. Kadari Richmond uh, averages almost 15. He has 15. His scoring has increased from 14 and a half last year, 18 and a half this year. Or season high, I should say. 14 to 18 this year. 7.20 to play in the second half. I think it's safe to say Donovan Kling is not coming back. I was anymore. thinking the same thing. Because the longer he sits, the more... That ankle firms up in a traveling violation called on Newton. It's 11 points. And Seton Hall has a chance to increase it to a larger lead. And now they're going to send Cam Spencer back in with four fouls. And I can see that. You're at 11. You know, it was like, I think Danny's feeling like it's either now or never. To the foul trouble. Diara has three. Klingon has three. He's been out since the 16-31 mark. Seton Hall's forced eight turnovers in the second half. Numbers for UConn. Caravan out to Spencer for three. In and out. And Johnson with the rebound. And he's hit from behind out of bounds. 16 fouls now for Seton Hall. It's the first foul for a day with Usu. All right, so it's five team fouls. Go to the basket, sweeping in with a hook shot, no good. And Dave Wusu has been really tough. Good rebound there. Dawes up off the glass, it's good. Largest lead of the night and for Seton the, Hall. And here's the thing, Tom, 14 points, fast break to zero for Utah. Timeout called by Dan Hurley. Uh, I, I will say that watching him on tape, Compared to watching him live, he's first of all he's broader in person and he's much more active, much more mobile than I thought. Johnson playing a bulk of the five spot with clinging out with an injury. See the thing about Samson Johnson, he's a good player, but in the low post, not really doing much. Shot clock is at five. Ball knocked away, picked up by Caravan. Caravan doesn't get the shot to go down, and the board is pulled down by the Pirates. Dawes got his hands on it.
they got to keep attacking. That's one thing I'd like to see Seton Hall continue to do. Not get conservative. No, absolutely not. Not with this much time left. Today, Wusu, who looked up at the shot clock, wants the screen. Bounce pass inside, Bad cut pass. off. Yep, by Johnson. That's like the first mistake he's made. Now Newton trying to answer. Gets it to Caravan. Caravan for three. Too strong. And Davis with the rebound. Part of the reason Seton Hall's been so effective, they've only turned it over twice in the second half. Richmond's jumper no good. He gets his own rebound. Follow your shot, boys and girls. He's been really good tonight. 18 points, six rebounds, four assists for Richmond. He's been the best player on the floor. Newton, right to the rack. And one. Yep, count the bucket. He'll get a free throw here. Kadari Richmond here just follows up his own shot. And then Tristan Newton, that time Betty Ako could not stay in front of him. Guard play. There's some really good guards in the Big East. Yeah. Newton to the free throw line, 12 points. He averages over 16, seventh in the Big East. And he converts the three point play. This game is far from over. Pressure put on by UConn, Ade Wusu. And now Richmond. What Richmond. a move. What a move. Count, that. Count the bucket. I think that's Spencer's fifth. I'm telling you, this guy. Up 8.47 to play in the first half. And then the, the switch by Seton Hall and became much more aggressive defensively. And I'll tell you what, that first three-point shot that Ade Wusu made kind of lit the fire for them. Season high, 21 points for Kadari Richmond. Another steal. And another block. Richmond got a piece of that one. Here comes Coleman. Coleman has it stripped away. Lost control. Goes to Ade Wusu, and he's fouled. I think the ball went out of bounds, so it's going to be UConn's basketball. So just the third turnover for Seton Hall in this half. Castle has it stripped away and a foul called against Day Wusu. Six. Castle will go to the free throw line. You know, that game last year that Seton Hall won here, he scored 17 straight points by himself. Yeah, that was a game Dan Hurley was not with the team because he had COVID. Castle missed the free throw, saves it, but saves it to Seton Hall, and a traveling violation called on the Pirates. Their fourth turnover this half. That could have been a foul. And Shaheen wanted it to be a foul. And Brian O'Connell said, well, Nathan Farrell was right there. He made the call. Again, Cam Spencer is fouled out. Second leading scorer for UConn. And Donovan Klingen is out with a, an injury. Ball for three. Ball too strong. Ade Wusu with the rebound, finds Davis. Davis! <laughs> 18 fast break points to none. That's an incredible number. The defense has been really good. Newton, no good. That's a bad foul. Three shot foul. Yeah, really bad foul.
you know, they're worried about the atmosphere here at the Rock tonight. At the line for you see the two-headed two -headed jab because the students, shooting. well, they left for break. It's been a nice atmosphere tonight. Very nice atmosphere. So new to the free throw line. Hey, one thing about UConn, let's face it, everywhere they go, they're going to have the bullseye on their back. It's going to be a big game. There's going to be big crowds. Wherever they go, they got to be used to it. And that's why the games against Gonzaga, even though it's considered neutral site because it was in Seattle, against North Carolina, the Kansas game, I mean, they, they were really good games. You no, know, not to make excuses. You know, they, they, they play great against Gonzaga. They come here thinking they're going to win, which happens. The kids, stuff happens even though Danny gets them ready. And they just didn't have it. But give Seton Hall all the credit in the world. And Newton trying to cut this to a 14-point game. He's made two. Here's the third. It's good. And they break the press. Dawes. It's good. Talk about a win that could define your season for Seton Hall. Yeah, he's, uh, he told us they were desperate for the win against Missouri. Well, this one is a, a game that you can build on. This might have been the dagger right here, this three by Dawes. And I didn't think he should shoot it, to be honest with you. I said they should have used a little bit of clock there. Four players in double figures for Seton Hall. Up 17 with two and a half to play. They definitely want to use some clock now. They run it down under 10. A day Wusu for three, no good. And Newton with the rebound. That's six rebounds for Newton. Long range three. Doesn't get it to go. Two oh six to play in the second half. Well, the last time that Seton Hall was able to uh, knock off a ranked team was last year against UConn here, 67-66. The putback at the end of the game, and Defoe was able to put it back to give them the win. In this league, you have a lot of chances to play against ranked teams. <laughs> Caravan's second free throw. It's good. 71 56. Number five, UConn, with two minutes to play in the second half, down 15. Dawes. Davis will begin. Davis, quick first step. Davis off the glass. It's good. And he has been looking to take Caravan really all night. That's been a tough matchup for Caravan defensively. 8 of 13 from the floor. 17 points. Richmond feathers it right off the glass. This is, this is a 19-point game. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Tremendous job by Seton Hall, that's all you can say. Diara and Caravan with the putback with 105 to play. Ball stripped out of bounds. It remains Seton Hall basketball with 51.7. It doesn't get any easier for either team. UConn will have to take on St. John's at home, though. Hey, take a look now. Take a look at them. You got You still got St. John's, tough games. Seton Hall, obviously, tough games. Butler, tough games. Providence, tough games. And that's not even talking about Creighton, Marquette, and, uh, and UConn. Yeah, they, I mean. And Seton Hall has Xavier coming up next. All right, so here's UConn's upcoming schedule. Just to peer ahead. St. John's 7-3, Rick Pitino's team. I'll tell you what, 
Rick Pitino can't be happy about this. <laughs> well, because he, he thinks that the, the, the UConn might come in wide eyed. Oh, can't be happy about this. Yeah, they're playing that one at the XL Center in Hartford. Solomon Ball converts the free throw. Kadari Richmond will check out to a standing ovation with 23 points. Six rebounds, five assists. Up over 900 points. Ball makes the second free throw. Ade Wusu will also check out. He has 9.6 rebounds. Two guys that know each other very well, Shaheen Holloway and Dan Hurley. Their paths were very similar. High school coaching after college, after playing in college. Shaheen, the all-time assist leader at Seton Hall. He's got a very casual stroll going right now. I'm sure his heart's racing after watching what his team was able to do here tonight. Talk about a statement. It does also tell you a little bit about the, the Big East, too. The rest of the starters will check out. Where's the night off? <laughs> I think that's a great way of putting I'll it. I'll tell you this one thing. On the road, there is no night off. Ten seconds left to play. Diara will just hold it. That's going to do it. Seton Hall down ten in the first half. A resounding win.